So we have introduced you to each Democrat running for U.S. Senate. This morning, the final candidate on the ballot, MJ Hager, who lives in Round Rock outside Austin. She is an Air Force veteran who served three tours in Afghanistan and was awarded the Purple Heart. She is in studio with us this morning. It's good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks so much for having me. You've been on the road so much, we haven't had you in studio. I have. Yet. We've been driving all over the state. It's a giant state, and I grew up here. And I knew that intellectually, but man, I'll tell you, until you, right. uh, you zigzag it, you don't really, uh, it, it doesn't it, really sink in. I bet not. Yeah. You've seen combat. You've written a book. Why in the world do you want to get into politics and the toxicity of Washington? Yeah, I get that question all the time, which makes me so sad. Really, that's not the way it should be. I mean, really serving our communities in elected office should be a public service. Um, I, I think it's the same reason that I put on the uniform. Um, I took an oath to support and defend our Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I spent three tours in Afghanistan fighting what I thought was a foreign enemy uh, of our Constitution, uh, oppression and governments that would um, you know, oppress people and try to control their actions through fear and intimidation. And then I, I come home and I see some of the same things from our own government. Um, so it's really just me continuing my oath, fulfilling my oath to, to, to support our, uh, our, our Constitution against a, a domestic threat. MJ, there are a lot of people running. What would you tell voters that set you apart? What, what one or two issues defined your campaign? You know, we have to start electing people whose lifelong ambition it wasn't to, to, to be in public office. We, we've got to stop electing, you know, lawyers and career politicians who, you know, end up going to D.C. and doing anything that they can to get reelected. Frankly, we need to start electing servant leaders who have a history of taking on large scale challenges and serving their community. So becoming a combat pilot in the first place as a woman was, uh, you know, a big struggle. Um, but I accomplished that. I was shot down in Afghanistan, as you know. Nine of us were surrounded by 150 enemy fighters. Those were, um, I'm facing better odds now in this race than I was then. Um, you know, and then taking on the bureaucrats in D.C. who were hurting our military with their policies and, and opening hundreds of thousands of jobs up for women in, in, in the military, I was told that that was impossible. So we just need to start electing people who have shown an ability to build a broad coalition of support for things that serve our community. So if elected day one in office, what do you do? Definitely, I think that uh, ending citizenship United ending uh, the influence of dark money in our uh, in our, our legislature. Um, we see it with John Cornyn, who I'm running against, taking money from the gun lobby and the private prison industry and big pharma, and then legislating in their best interests and legislating in ways that keep their pockets lined. Um, I think people in Texas are really tired of looking to D.C. for leadership and not seeing their values reflected back. This is going to be obviously the biggest race on the ballot next year for, for Texans. Mm -hmm. What's this race going to cost? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I, I'm not 100 percent sure. I mean, I, I know that, you know, last cycle, Beto raised $80 million. Um, there's a lot of people in Texas who are excited to, um, you know, see better leadership. And with such a big state and so many people and so many media markets, it is expensive. Um, but frankly, you know, we're just, we have uh, raised millions of dollars on grassroots donations. I think our average online donation is like $29. There's a lot of people really spun up about um, flipping the majority in our Senate to get our government working for us again so that we can get a vote on things like pharmaceutical bills and election security and and frankly people are standing in line to, to help and last question the biggest question here what does MJ stand for oh. <laughs> um, so my maiden name was Mary Jennings um, and uh, everybody called me MJ and so when I married my soulmate I didn't want to lose the MJ and so Jennings became my middle name all right sounds good thanks for your service as well too MJ and good luck to you next year thank you so much